Hello, today I would like to share with you a particular scripture that has been in my life since I got saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and that is Psalm 91. I'm reading out of the NIV Bible. Now, Psalm 91 is what many Christians recite when they want protection in the midst of danger, but God doesn't promise us that we're not going to ever experience danger, but he does promise that he will help us when we face danger. And so in laboring to love an abusive mate back in 1996, Psalm 91 became more real to me than ever before. And then through traveling here and there and relocating, Psalm 91 showed up again many times in my relocations. Psalm 91 reads like this, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fouler snare and from the deadly pestilence. Now let me stop right there. When we decide that the Lord is going to be our protector, we have to hold on to the words that he gives us. He inspired David to write such a psalm because David, the psalmist, was in trouble at the time. He had a king that did not like him, that was jealous of him, and he had to flee for his life. David was on the run, and in the process of going through all his challenges, he always remembered the Lord. And so when we dwell with the Lord, we know that we are protected. We know that he is our refuge and he is our fortress and he will save us. Now, some people say, well, what about my aunt or my uncle or my mother or my father who was always a believer? Cancer took them out. AIDS took them out. Heart disease took them out. And many other things took them out. So how can you say that God protects us? We all have an expiration date. Protecting us does not mean that he is going to keep us around for the rest of our lives. Protecting us is just what it means. During certain times in our life, God protects us. So that aunt, that uncle, that parent, those people that we know, they had plenty of times in their lives where they were protected. But then there came a point in their life where the chapter was written, the end. And you will have your end, and other people will have their end around you. The focus is not on the end of the book, but the focus is on the journey getting to the end. So what will you be doing on your journey as you head toward your end? Will you be asking the Lord for protection? Will you recite a psalm like this? Will you believe in a psalm like this? Moving on, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. This are these words are encouraging words. These words are the kind of words that will bind that spirit of fear, that spirit of worry. When we hold on to statements like this, we can go through our we can go through the darkness that's around us and head toward the light because all the while the voice is telling us that we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. We're not going to have to worry about somebody shooting daggers at us and killing us. And the words that people speak are just as powerful as daggers. People's words can kill you. People's words can put you in a hospital. People's words can make you mentally and physically sick. So we have to take a covering. We have to look at Psalm 91 and believe all that it tells us so that when the enemy comes 
with all of his foolishness, we have something to hold on to. You see, in Psalm 91, we read, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. How many times have you looked around and seen people go through all sorts of trials and tribulations and you are sitting there in peace? You can even say to yourself, wow, it's been a long time since I've had a major storm like that. Folks are dying all around you. People are being robbed, murdered, raped, shot and everything else. And rather than looking at that person's situation or, or people who are going through all sorts of things, what you can do is say, thank God, thank God, thank God that you are with me. Sometimes we can delve so deep into other people's issues that we don't see the blessings that we have. Some of us are so fearful that we might be bragging and boasting and thinking we're better when people are down. But that's not it. When you're thanking the Lord that something hasn't happened to you, it's because you want to encourage yourself to keep walking with the Lord and to never feel like you're doing anything in your own strength. Reading on, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. So you're making the Lord your refuge. You're saying that, I believe in him and I trust that nothing is going to happen to me. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. According to Psalm 91, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. So you see, here we are once again encouraged that we don't have to go through anything alone, that God gives us that power. The power is in the praise and the worship, thanking the Lord each and every day, trusting the Lord, taking that time out to pray. That's where the power is. And then you can be able to go about your day in Jesus name, knowing in the back of your mind that you spoke to him and you know that he heard you. And so whatever anybody has to say is not going to kill your spirit. Moving on, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So anytime you reach out to the Lord, you want to give him that praise because when you do that, the Lord will see that you really do love him and that you do trust that he will rescue you. And the Lord can't help but affirm that he is going to protect you and that whenever you call on him and you pray to him, that he will answer you. Maybe not always in the way that you like, but at least he will answer you. All that trouble that you have gone through, that he delivered you from, all of those times where you thought that you were by yourself, but you know that you weren't, God was there. And because you have lived as long as you live to this day, you know it was nothing but the Lord. So be grateful and know that God is with you. And look to the Psalms to give you encouragement. Because for some of you, you will never ever have to worry about anybody deliberately coming after you and wanting you dead. The Psalmist David had that worry for many, many days and weeks and months. So, thank you for listening. And may Psalm 91 and all of the information that you heard today bless your life.